Jim Ellington, uh, surfboard manufacturer, shaper. Uh, been doing it since 1976 and have worked my way to being a shaper, manufacturer, owner, designer uh, from the rock bottom in Hawaii, North Shore of Oahu, hand sanding surfboard, the lowest. So I've worked with everything to this top notch uh, pyramid I'm at the top of now. I love doing it, I love my job. I can't wait to get to work. When I wake up sometimes in the morning from three to five o'clock, I'm waking up every half hour just going, I gotta get a surf in, because surf makes me feel euphoric. The whole day set around that ocean hit me, that cold water. I mean, it, it just does something to your body and your metal structure. And I, then after that, it's like I get to work and I'm st when I'm walking up the beach, after I cleanse my head after getting out of the water, I'm going, okay, I gotta do this. I'm already running through what I'm gonna do at work, getting very excited. Uh, my stomach starts getting like butter butterflies. I still get that kid butterfly, like a guy wanting to catch the, the pun in a, in a high school game. You get those butterflies. And it, 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 you get, I get goosebumps right now just thinking about it. And my hair standing up. It's like an excitement. And, and I, I hope everyone has that opportunity to have a job like that. I have an excitement. It's not the best job in the world, but I have, to, I have decent savings and I have an attitude that I want to make my customers the best sport they ever had and work with them and make them excited like they're making me excited. 1975, basically parents got a divorce a little earlier. Mother moved to Oklahoma, was working at a restaurant, uh, dishwashing, busboying. Um, got in with the wrong crowd because of, you know, different family, felt neglected, throwing, you know, throwing stuff that was inside me out. Got in the wrong crowd, started smoking pot. My dad was strict military and he kicked me out of the house and uh, I went back to my mother's and I didn't like it, stayed there and came back and uh, found myself without a place to stay and my best friend was living on Oahu. He had left and graduated the year before and said, you've got a place over here. If you can pay $75 a month for rent, you've got to have your own food. So I like living at home. I go, okay, went over there, found out it's hard to get a job. Got a job though at Dick Burr Surfboards at Sunset Beach, a world famous surf spot overlooking it as a hand sander. 1976 summer, Ed's mother got sick in New Jersey who owned uh, Dick Brewer's glassing facility at Sunset Beach and I was starving and I tried to be loyal to him and so I went by this shop, Tom Parrish Surfboards, who was the greatest shaper at that time. I didn't really realize that. Uh, they kept asking me, why don't you work for us? Why don't you work for us? And I ended up, they said, we'll get you more positions because these guys don't show up half the time. We need a guy like you. We know how hard, we've heard about how hard you work. And from there, I started taking everyone's jobs all the way up. I'm a lot happier now. But I have my periods of, why wasn't I appreciated more? Why wasn't I? Why, I didn't ask for anything, but you know, it's just, that's just the way life is. I finally came to terms that, you know, God's behind me and that's all that matters. He's never let me down when I've gone through bad periods. I mean, I remember in Hawaii when I was starving, when the Ed Surfoss of Dick Brewer Surfboards had left, I was dry heaving on the toilet, could buy a five pound bag of white rice at the IGA down in Haleiwa, Hawaii, Oahu. And a, a half a pound of hamburger was a luxury for me. And remember running out and dry heaving and asking my dad, could I possibly borrow, borrow or have some money? I'm not making it here. And he said, we can't afford it now, Jimmy. And that night, dry heaving on the toilet and going, God, why me? Well, he had a purpose for me and I made it. And he didn't let me fail. He's always had his hand on it.